Ocean Software was a huge British developer and made hundreds of games for computers and consoles in the 80s and 90s. In 1996, it was bought by Infogrames and then kind of ceased to be on its own and was absorbed. And so in today's video, I'm gonna take a look at the games that they published for the Sega Genesis and many unreleased games that were intended to come out but never did, but were in playable form, that's right. So today's video, I'm gonna take a look at nine games, four released, five unreleased, as well as another game I'll just show footage of that was in unfinished state. I've done many ranking videos on my channel. It's been a while since I've done one, but finally was able to sit down and play some of these games and give you my thoughts of what I would rank them today playing the games today and telling you my thoughts about them, how good they are compared to what else was offered on the Sega Genesis. So sit back, relax, here we go. Next up is Adam's Family Values. And you know, here in the States, we didn't get this in physical. It was, I do believe, offered on the Sega channel. And this is a Zelda-like overhead adventure game. It plays reminiscent of Fester's Quest on the NES. I do believe it was a spiritual successor. And you are controlling Fester. He moves a little bit slow and his weapon does decrease in uh, length of the lightning bolt he shoots out if he gets hit. But you know, overall, I thought this was a solid experience. It does rely on passwords to progress. There's no save feature per se, but you know, with cell phones, that's not really a big deal anymore. Uh, other than the character moving a little bit too slow, it's a huge map, and I think this is one of the better games that Ocean released on the Sega Genesis. You know, there was a Super Nintendo version as well. At the end of the day, I'm going to give this a B. I do think this is a solid experience and one worth checking out. It seemed like every company was trying to come up with their own Mario or Sonic, and Ocean was no different because they came up with Mr. Nuts. And, you know, funny name aside, this really is just an average platformer as you're defeating enemies, very colorful levels. You know, you're using acorns to take out enemies. You can jump on them. Uh, I found this to be a somewhat challenging platformer because it kind of definitely looks like a kid's game, but I think some kids would be frustrated playing this back in the day. It was released in physical form on the Mega Drive. We didn't get it here in the States. And you know, there's so many other platformers that were trying to do games like this. And you know, I just am a huge platform fan, but just couldn't get myself into really enjoying this one. But I did think it had really nice graphics, but average at the end of the day, it's a C. Many people are gonna have different opinions about worms, but this offered a unique experience on the Sega Genesis. Yes, it's a scaled down version of the PC Classic. The 32-bit versions of this game offered more weapons. Uh, the Saturn had a great soundtrack, you know, but looking at the 16-bit version, it's still classic Worms. Even though it's a scaled down version, even though it doesn't have as many of the features other versions had, I still think it offers an enjoyable experience, especially multiplayer, of this PC Classic. You know, obviously I'm gonna recommend playing the PC version over any other version, but I still think this is an enjoyable game and a timeless classic, scaled down version or not, it's still a B. I think it's a good game and definitely worth checking out. Toy Lion in the UK, Cartoon in the US. I have no connection to the Adventures of Mighty Max, no memories of watching the cartoon. And you know, you might have grown up with either one and have a nostalgic connection. I, I don't. And so I'm looking at this as a straightforward platformer. What the heck is up with that jumping? Holy cow. It just seems very unrefined and I absolutely hate it. I'm a big platformer fan, but just found the jumping mechanic in this game as just a completely unpleasant experience. And to me, it really takes away from what I feel they were trying to do was a solid game. The wandering levels are difficult to navigate. And you know, some people may enjoy what they're offering here. I didn't, and it's a D for me. There's many other games on the platform that are much better. 
Now we get into the unreleased games that Ocean Software was gonna be publishing. And first up is Jelly Boy. And this was offered on some other platforms, most notably Super Nintendo. But this is kind of a Kirby style game in which you're going around punching enemies. You do get special abilities to solve puzzles. There's a time limit. I really enjoyed the graphics and gameplay of this game. Wow. I wish this was released as I think it is a fairly unique title. With many of these unreleased games, I am grateful for people who had prototypes that were able to dump and preserve these games so that other, other people could appreciate and experience this. As you know, I think this is a good game and I really enjoyed what I played so far. Uh, definitely a B for me one of the better games and unfortunately was never released back in the day. Mr. Nuts 2 Hoppin' Mad was a platformer that had nothing to do with the original first release of Mr. Nuts. So that is confusing right there. It has this overworld where you have to go explore and unlock things and then it jumps into a side platformer. Now, I do think this game's different. I don't know if it's better though. Um, it's really trying to, you know, take the nod from Super Mario World that was released on Super Nintendo. It has really nice graphics like the first one. I found the jumping mechanic and speed to be much better, but my issue with this game is the confusing background. There's these flowers and they confuse people on what to pick up. There's flowers and then there's these gems and items to pick up and it's hard to distinguish between both of them. This is still a C for me, definitely worth checking out and I can see why they didn't release it. Lobo became a super popular comic book character in the 90s and he was supposed to star in his own fighting game for both the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis and for the reasons I'm gonna show you, probably good why this wasn't released as it just feels unfinished. There was review copies sent out to magazines who panned it and compared to the other fighting games already on the established platforms, this feels very unfinished and there's only six playable characters. You can only play as Lobo in the solo mode. And I'm sure that they were gonna add things to this before they released it. If they were to release it like this, holy cow, yes. Not a finished game, but it's hard. It's really hard with prototypes to say exactly was this the finished product. But I do have to say, I see what they were trying to do with the graphics going with that pre-rendered style that Donkey Kong Country made popular, but you know, playing this, it's not a great fighting game. There's other fighting games that are much better. It's a D for me, and avoid this one. A sequel to Putty, which was released on the Amiga and Super Nintendo, we have Putty Squad. This was released on the Super Nintendo, but the Mega Drive version was canceled late in development. I don't think this one was complete, but it is in playable fashion. And you know, I would love to see this refined a bit, I think this is an okay, interesting puzzle platformer. Lots of items, very colorful. Ocean made a lot of colorful side scrollers and I really like what they tried to do here. Um, it's just hard to tell like what else this needed to, to make it have a little bit more pizzazz. It's a C for me, uh, definitely worth checking out and it's cool that the prototype was dumped in 2015. Next, you got Waterworld. And this is, you know, a game from the tragic movie that has a lot of backstory about how expensive it was. And this game, I think, tries to be a good game. I know there's gonna be people out there that are gonna like this. Uh, there is a Super Nintendo version, which I do believe this is based upon. Uh, you go around this overworld map here and you have lots of different weapons. Fairly challenging game. There is a password feature so that you can check out the different levels. There is a cheat mode also that you can get enabled so you can check out a, a majority of this game. I found this one to be below average. I didn't like the gameplay mechanics. I thought it was slow. It had good graphics. Many ocean games had above average graphics, but I just didn't find myself enjoying this. I found the overworld map to be kind of a chore and a bore and very challenging to get through without codes. And the platformers just moved too slow for me. It's a D for me, but interesting to check out, interesting backstory. 
there actually was another Flintstones game that was offered on the Sega channel separate from Taito's and this has not been dumped, at least complete version, at least publicly. And there's only uh, one dumped version of this that has no sound and two playable levels. So I'm not going to rank it, but this is Flintstones, the Sega Genesis version based on the movie. And here it is in unfinished form. Here's my final rankings. What do you think? Have you played any of these? What are your thoughts on them? They may be different and that's okay. In the comments below, let me know. And just want to thank everybody for coming to my channel. I have lots of different content that I offer. Everything from Atari to Xbox. I talk about bad games. I do collection videos as well as many other things. And I just really enjoy making content for you. And I've done over a thousand videos. And if you like what you see, you may want to hit that like and subscribe button and click the bell. As you know, I'm going to be continuing to offer content on my channel. You folks are wonderful and beautiful. Let's keep it positive. This is the Immortal John Hancock. Have a great day.